there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. First, let me just disclaimer this video. If you hear any weird uh, comments from the peanut gallery, my husband's on his side of the basement uh, woodworking or trying to inject little comments here and there. This is take three of the intro, in case you're wondering. Anyway, today I'm going to show you how to make this uh, fun card using some really cool techniques that I think will help you use your old supplies a little bit more efficiently and get you some of the new trendy looks that have been all the rage in the stamping world. If there is such a thing. Well, yeah, there's such a thing. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to do these um, images here. And if you notice, they have a little bit of embossing to them. Now there are dies out there that will die cut and emboss your images and they're really expensive and they look really great. But I thought I've got thousands of stamps. How could I get that look with the stamps I already have? Well, I'm gonna show you. So the first thing you're gonna need is some glossy cardstock. You can use regular cardstock. Glossy is just, um, this is kind of fun to use. It looks a little bit fancier. And um, I took three of these stamps. These are snails by about art accents and I just stuck them on one uh, clear mount. Um, since I mounted them all at the same time they're all the same thickness so um, I don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to use my brush markers just to go in there and throw in some color. I'm going to use yellow and some of this nice fresh green here. Being, I'm just going to be very quick about it. And I also want to get some teal in there. I think that would be really really pretty. These uh, Tombow markers that I'm using are great. I got these on a yard sale, 10 cents a piece, and they are so juicy. I have reinked a few of them. Um, somebody asked me how I did that, and it's simple. You just use tweezers to pull out the um, the brush nib, put a few drops of glycerin, reinker, and drop or two of water if you need it. Really, maybe like six drops total of ingredient and it works great and then you'll, your markers will be as good as new. I'm just giving it a few taps with this uh, dark brown marker and then I'm going to do a few taps with the black marker and I do want to give credit to Lisa at um, Local King Rubber Stamps for sharing this technique at a stamp show. Um, it's one of my favorites. I go back to it all the time. All right so this is pretty juicy but if you're worried about your ink drying just give it a breath. <sighs> breath of hot air will it work wonders. And then just press it to your paper and give it a second for the ink to transfer. Now, if you're working on photo paper, glossy photo paper, instead of glossy cardstock, you can't press it down this long or it will stick. It'll kind of glue itself to your stamp and it will be a pain in the butt to clean off. So um, as long as you're using glossy cardstock, you're fine. If you're going to try this with glossy photo paper, then just, um, and then just make sure you don't hold it to the paper so long. So there's that. That looks kind of cool. And I'm going to show you how we did the butterfly as well because that's also really fun. Maybe I'll just demonstrate it on the larger one because it's pretty much the same thing either way. Um, I began by coloring about half the butterfly with this yellow and then I did some orange. I also like these memento markers. These are uh, available at Joann's. The stamp is also by About Art, Ac um, About Art Accents and Art Neko. They've actually um, just changed their name. They've decided to go all the way over to Art Neko. And uh, either way, you'll be able to find me search either of those keywords. I'm going to add a little bit of blue there. And again, I am going to add a little bit of the black because I just think it gives it such a cool look. Try not to be too perfect with it. Again, just breathe on it and stamp. All right, I really love the way that looks. It's so bright and fun. All right, um, you just want to let this dry for a few minutes, and then you can, I'm just going to speed it up. Just hit it with a heat gun. When in doubt, just get the heat gun out. When in doubt, get the heat gun out. That's a nice little motto, don't you think? There we go. Because I want to add a little more color to it so I don't have that stark white in there. And also, it helps when we die cut that, um, I just want to see what that color looks like. It helps when we die cut because if we go outside the lines, if our cutting's not perfect, when we hand cut it, um, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going in adding some color to the snails, this uh, light brown, some just over kind of some of the whiter areas. And I'm going to go in with some of this, um, let's see what that color looks like. Um, no, I think I want maybe this color. Yeah, add some of this gray into the snails as well. If you're having uh, trouble seeing any of this, if you want to zoom in closer, you can use a full screen button on your YouTube player. That'll help out quite a bit. And I'm going to do the same thing for the butterfly, except I think I'll go in with um, that light yellow. Let me just test that. Yeah, that's pretty. 
and then you can just get rid of that stark white. And uh, the glossy cardstock does give you a little more time to blend. If you're doing this on photo paper, I actually probably wouldn't do this step. I think I would omit it. And you can add some other colors into the open areas of your design, which I will do here. And on some of these spots here too. And take more time when you're doing this at home. I just wanna kind of cram as many techniques into this video as I can. All right. So to get the um, the embossed uh, texture to it, like I had in this card here, I used a texture plate, um, and I'll show you. I got a stack of them right here, and you probably have these in your stash from many moons ago. They're quite popular. You could find them everywhere, even like Walmart or Target. And they're these um, these plastic plates that have a design on each side, and they were quite affordable. I think you got six plates, which were twelve designs for under ten dollars and um, what you want to look for is designs that are kind of um, organic looking or um, kind of like an overall pattern like this lace these flowers are good um, I use the spider web to do the butterfly wings because it was kind of linear this uh, kind of texture canvas texture would work really well anything that's kind of got an organic pattern will work good with these animal stamps um, I used on this one the spider web and on this one I used a pebble background and on these right here, which we're actually going to make a card with, I used a lace. If I hold that up, hopefully you can see that. I added another light to my setup here. I'm hoping it's helpful. Maybe if I tip it a little bit, you can see that. So it just gives you a whole new element. So this is how you use it in your Big Shot machine or whatever die cutter you have. What you want to do is replace the Fisker's plate with um, a cutting pad. So you're going to use only one cutting pad. This pretend this is like your bottom cutting pad. It's also your um, surface you're going to use to emboss. So I would cut this apart because I would only want to do the snails, for instance. You put your item to emboss, emboss face down. Then you put on something squishy. This is a silicone mat. On top you could use a sheet of rubber. You could use a couple sheets of fun foam. Whatever you need to get that to squish. And then you put your cutting pad on top and go right through your big shot, your cuddle bug, just like you would with a thin die, exact same way. And then um, when it's done, you simply want to cut carefully around the edges. And then I just took my little ink sponge and a little brown ink, and I just finished off the edges that way. So it, it kind of replicates that die cut edge a little bit better than just simply cutting out around it. So it gives you the look of those fancy dies that cut in emboss, which I think is pretty cool since you can do it with stuff you probably already have. If you don't have the, te the texture plates, use an embossing folder, open it up. So you'll have your bottom plate, have your um, embossing folder opened up. You're only going to use one half. Put your image down, face down, then put your squish pad on, and then put your other plate. So you can do the same thing with an embossing folder or a stencil. Um, you just got to make sure that it's um, you take up the space. So when you put it through your die cutter, it's going to press this press the squishy pad down onto your paper. So that's basically all you have to uh, remember. You can practice on scrap paper first until you get the hang of it. So there, that's a, that's another tip I want to share with you because I think it is really, really fun. So let's make a card. I'm going to fold this in half for my card base. Hopefully this is the, yes, this is the piece I intended for that. Um, and I've got my snails all done. And now we're going to make the background. And this gets pretty messy. I should grab a scrap piece of paper. Let me see if I have an ugly jelly print that I can use. They all came out pretty good, so I kind of don't want to. Oh, we'll use this one. This one wasn't so hot. This will be my bag. This will be my scrap paper. All right, and um, we're going to use a stencil. I've got one under this pile somewhere. Um, and it really doesn't matter what you use for a stencil, honestly. Uh, that's the cool thing about this technique. You can use different stencils. It doesn't really matter as long as you have something that's kind of a design rather than a specific image. And um, I've got just got my little mini sprayers over here. I asked my contact at Oriental Trading if they were going to get these back, but they uh, they said they do have them on order, but they haven't come over on the boat yet. So check back if you've been waiting for those. I just wanted to put that out there since some people did ask me. And I think I'm just going to use some different designs here together. This template is from Die Cuts with a View. It's a great bargain. I've been using, I bought a few of these on sale. So this was actually $3 for these four designs. I thought that was... Um, pretty affordable, and um, and I got it on at Joanne.com actually. Oh, I wanted to mention another thing: those stamps that I've that I've been showing you, they're uh, they're going to be a giveaway on my blog. So if you look under the video, you'll see a link to my blog. If you go over there, you can um, 
you can check it out you can subscribe if you like you don't have to be a subscriber to win so don't worry about that um but if you do like it i would appreciate a subscription that's awesome um and if you just want to come over for the contest hey i i get that that's cool too all right so now i have a bunch of different designs on there on my background now i'm going to set this aside since i used ink i will have to wash that otherwise it'll become part of my next project and that might or might not not be what i want um i want to add a little bit of sparkle to this so i am going to use some of my fancy eyeshadows here and i'm just going to use a brush and brush some of that on and it will kind of cling to the damp paper and then we will um We'll use, we'll use some hairspray to seal it. So I'm just going to grab it. Any brush will work fine for this. Just want to brush some of that on. It's really sparkly. This is the uh, Dollar Tree eyeshadow that we made paint with last week. I mean, that was a really fun tutorial. I really enjoyed that. And then I had still enough to make a pot of paint of each color and to have a uh, little container of just the powder pigment. You can kind of scoop it back up. You don't waste any. Get that all on there. All right, I kind of don't, I don't know if I like the white background. I feel like I want to give it another little score to something. So let's see, I mean, that's a little dark. I want to, I want something on there. I want some green, I think. Where is my bright green? Hmm, that's weird. Oh, it's right here. Why was it wasn't in my container? There, let's give it a, give it just an overall squirt there. And let's just flip it over. Get the big splats out and go in a little bit more of the pearly stuff because sparkle is always nice it does kind of stick to where it's wetter better and then uh, what i'm going to do is i'll run this over to the uh, big shot and i will emboss it so we have an extra texture extra texture on top hang on a minute i'll be right back with the embossed item Okay, I did go ahead and emboss these uh, designs. I used a flower on this one, and I used just this pebbly one on that one. I thought I might as well, my water pump was on, so I figured, out hey, what the heck, I will uh, do that while I'm waiting. And here, isn't that beautiful and shiny? Um, so what I did was I just spritzed this with a little Aquanet, which is a hairspray, you can use Fixative, and um, ran it through my Big Shot, and it's great. It does need to dry a little bit because of the Aquanet, but I'm just going to set that aside and let that happen. All right, so here's our finished card, and we're going to go about, and it's something I want to, I'm trying to see if I have a clean enough finger to show you. I can rub my finger on that, and that's been sprayed by the Aquanet, and this, the sparkle does not come off, so the Aquanet is totally safe to use for this. It's not going anywhere. All right, so I want to choose some papers to back my card with, and um, I kind of like that red it's only going to be a little bit of that showing so i think i'll get a little of that make a little note of where i want to cut that and then i'll figure out how wide i want to cut that that needs to dry though got my little tiny trimmer here i got so many supplies out when i was doing this i'm thinking you know i make more of a mess making a card than i do when i'm making a painting that's, that's crazy let's see if we can see my little Mark, I think it was there. Let's see how that works. Yep, that's pretty good. And um, now I'm going to want to... Why don't uh, I pause this and dry that panel? Alright, the reason you want to dry it... Um, two reasons. First of all, you don't want to get your, um, your cutter all goopy with wet stuff, but also because you uh, it'll it'll t it'll snag and not cut it'll tear rather than cut if it's damp so just a little tip for you there I am going to just figure out how wide I want that I need to make a little mark there trim that down and adhere that to the background with my ATG tape, which I love because it's so easy to use. Does anybody know out there with this gun, do you know if I can use a half inch and three quarter inch tapes with that? I was wondering because it would be handy to have that, those wider tapes for things. So if anybody knows if that's the same, if the pink gun is the same as the yellow one, just a different color, that would be great. Leave a comment if you know because I'm very curious as to if I can use um, both of those guns together or if I can use that, I'm sorry, the other tape for that gun. All right, now I'm going to put a, I just want to border across the center. Let me see. Let's see. I gotta put those little snails on there, so I want to make sure they're gonna stand out a bit. That's kind of cute. It's kind of plain, but 
That's all right. Some plain is good. I think I'm going to go with that. Plus, it's already cut and it's here. And it's ready to, ready to roll. So, sounds good to me. And I'll stick that down on top. And I'll trim it later. I'm not going to worry about that now. I did a... Oh, well, my first one, I put it on crooked. So, I'm going to try to get it on straight. I had to add another little strip of paper to make it look like it was supposed to be that way. Of course, if I didn't tell you, you'd never know. It wasn't. And I want to add... I want to add another color in here. Let's see, maybe this would be kind of cool. I'm just going to kind of tear it. If I tear with the top, if the bottom part is going to have the deco. If I tear towards myself, the bottom piece I'm tearing away from myself has a deco edge. Does that make sense? I'm not sure if it makes sense or not, but that's going to go on there. A little bit of adhesive there. And that will give us a little place for our snails to be crawling around on. So I know we're covering up a lot of our beautiful background, but that's all right. What are you going to do, right? And I think I will use... Um, oh, I lost my little tiny snail. He's over there. I think I will use some hot glue for that. But first, I feel like I, the, it needs a little shadow there. So I'm just going to grab some ink and a blender. And add a little shadow under there so it feels like our little guys have a place to be because that's a little too stark. We need a little shadow. Do that right with my blending tool. That might be a little bit much, but that's alright. We're fine. And yeah, that's alright. Or is that blending too much? I think it's fine. It, there's not as much contrast as I would like, but it's gonna it's gonna be just fine. You're you're learning the techniques and uh, that's the important thing. So a little bit of hot glue there. Push that up into frame. I really don't want to leave that there. I've got to have a new. I have my my. I think my power cord's on the wrong side or something because I'm always, I'm right-handed, but I got my glue gun to my left. It's really not ideal. I should, I should have Mr. Frugal look into that for me. Get me a new outlet or something. Maybe I'll put that little guy up there. That would be kind of different. Yeah, why not? It's like perspective. He could be far away. Of course, if it was really perspective, I had that guy way in front, but. Okay, so maybe not perspective. Oh, I'm going to burn my fingers on that. That is really hot. There we go. Okay, and now I'm going to trim that so that it's the same size. And I'm going to show you my little trick for putting twine on because sometimes you put some twine on and it kind of wants to have a mind of its own. And I think, you know, I did like that design element that I put in the last one that I only did because I made a mistake. <laughs> and I'll show you what that is. But it really, I think, added something to my design. So what I'm going to do is just trim, oh, about a quarter of an inch strip of paper. And I'm going to adhere that at the bottom of my little snail parade there. Snail parade, I like that. What are we up to? Ah, we've got plenty of time. We've got two minutes. Look, I can fire. All right, let's get this out of the way before I injure someone. Me, most likely. There we go. Um, and I'm going to just put this under here. Snail parade. I like that. And I can tell already this is not going to come out as well as the original, but that's all right because you're getting all the ideas. Now, when I want to put a piece of twine on there, and, you know, let's pretend that I inked this so it actually matched. There we go. Um, make just a tiny little notch on the end. You don't, I mean, it's not even, it's like a sixteenth of an inch. Look at that. It's just tiny, tiny little notch, okay? You're not going to see it when you're done. Then grab your twine. This is unwieldy twine. I had to put a couple of rubber bands around it because it was crazy talk, I tell you. Craziness. And I'm just going to put that there. You make sure you just, when you wrap your twine, it's going to catch in that little notch that you made. All right, and here it's catching. Make sure it catches on that notch. And that's going to keep your twine from slipping. You don't need to um, adhere it on the back or anything. It's perfect. And I'm going to get a tip for your leftover twine, too. So let's see if I can tie this in a bow in a minute or less. Oh, we're down to the wire, guys. We're down to the wire. I didn't think this was going to take this long. All right, so then you're going to have little bits of leftover twine, okay? Because when you're going to trim this, guess what? These leftover twines are perfect for stringing into a button um, so that you have a faux strung button. So I just string it on. Of course, it's not going to cooperate because it knows that I'm almost out of time and those buttonholes aren't very good. And how do they make wooden buttons anyway? That's driving me crazy. But anyways, you string these into the buttons and you end up with some thing that looks like that. You can also use slivers of paper 
to fill in your buttonholes, which is totally awesome and totally cheap. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this video. And until next time, happy crafting.